So, this is the unconference slot about GNOME uh, safety. And uh, I want this really to be a very, very interactive conversation, almost like a brainstorming session with all of you guys, the audience. So don't let me do all the talking, even though I have a few slides that I put together to um, kind of like introduce the context of this discussion, introduce like what the problem is, what is it that I uh, want to go with uh, with this. So GNOME safety, let's work on this together is the tagline. Uh, what is GNOME safety? This is a concept that was, um, I think, introduced following a keynote of a Guadec 2014 uh, by Matthew Garrett, if I am remembering correctly. I really like this quote. I went back and um, kind of looked at the notes that were taken back then. I like this quote by Federico. Safety is doing things that prevent harm to users. So it's a little bit of privacy. It's a little bit of security. However, those words usually have very specific technical connotations, or sometimes they are used um, as like in, in a way that makes them opposed to being user friendly or to being even useful for a user. We definitely don't want any of that to happen, but we do want bad that we do want to prevent bad things from happening uh, to our users. So a safety team was formed in 2014 uh, following the uh, I mean, I think Agbotic actually, I, I was not part of that team actually. So I don't know, but uh, there is a wiki page uh, there. Um, a few ideas came from uh, that session that happened at Guadic. Uh, you all can go to the GNOME wiki and search. I copied here a few of them that were, uh, I think, relevant, where we did make some progress. Uh, so, of course, a lot of discussion revolved around sandboxing, which actually kind of happened in a way. Like now we have Flatpak, we can have sandboxed applications. Not all of them uh, are properly sandboxed. Not all of them work to you know their full feature set inside a sandbox yet, maybe. Uh, we have some work to do, but we are clearly in a much better place than uh, two years ago with that regard. Um, application audit, I... I uh, think that some of that happened. Um, you know, there were talks about auditing some of the apps that go on the network, like maps or uh, weather or, you know, uh, uh, things like notes that talk to web services to make sure that uh, all communication happens uh, uh, through HTTPS, for instance, or that no information is leaked in plain text and things like that. Uh, I am not aware of any particular problem in that area. Um, I think, again, that we're doing uh, quite okay in that. Uh, and then I put a dot, 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 because really there were a lot of small ideas or things, but I am not sure that this is at the top of everyone's mind right now. And I think it's still very important. So hold that thought for a second. On another hand, in 2013, the GNOME Foundation, um, through, um, uh, I think, on Planet GNOME, if I remember correctly, uh, we uh, did a, a crowdfunding, a fundraising from, from people, and $20,000 were raised uh, for privacy and security. So the goals um, with this money was to spend this money on features that make no more secure and more privacy aware, which are concepts that are very, very similar to you know, the concept of safety. This happened the year before. So now, uh, fast forward to 2016, uh, the funds are still in the bank. We still have $20,000 uh, in the uh, foundation uh, bank account to uh, spend on these topics. Uh, we, haven't, uh, we haven't spent them. And as uh, 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 officer, uh, officer on, of the board, it's my duty to find the best way to spend this money. So I took uh, an action item to, to do that and to basically talk, engage the community to find the best way to spend this. Uh, so basically, this is not me telling you I want to do X or Y, it's a call for help. Let's brainstorm all together, let's take some time here, let's start the discussion right now. 
uh, perhaps let's continue this discussion uh, tomorrow and in the rest of the week uh, during the buff days for some actionable ways to spend funds. I do want, however, to pitch some of the, my own ideas or ideas that have been floated around and see what you guys think. So one of the possible ideas was to make a hack fest. Let's make a hack fest, let's identify, I don't know, uh, a number of people, a group of people that are interested in working on these topics in the community. Uh, they can sign up, they can express their interest. The foundation would support this group by flying them on somewhere and organizing a hack fest where they can uh, write some of these new features that we decide or uh, where they can you know, uh, make concrete progress during that week or however long the hack fest is. The problem with this, as far as I know, um, is that no one really from that team, except maybe for uh, Toby, I don't know if Toby is in the room right now. No, not Toby. Um, is here at this Guadec. Uh, maybe Steph, I don't know if Steph was also in that team, but also Steph, I don't see Steph here. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> um, but basically, I mean, there's no one in at the moment that can, uh, you know, of that former group or of a new group that is, you know, has stepped up to push these topics forward. Is anyone here in this room interested uh, in an idea like that? Uh, Alberto, yes. No. no. Uh, you're gonna need this. Uh, I don't know how to turn it on. Yeah, it's off. It's off. Hello. Oh, there we go. Um, so I'm not necessarily volunteering myself, okay. but uh, uh, last week at Flock, I met some of the guys of the security team, mm -hmm. and they're working on some really interesting use cases for disk disk encryption and some other security schemes. And they're they're coming to a point where they're starting to be able to worry about the desktop use cases. I met a few guys that I haven't met before from that team, and they're really enthusiastic to get involved in GNOME to help us, uh, you know, achieve uh, actionable items towards that goal. So if you organize a hack fest, uh, let me know so that I can you or us <laughs> organize a hack fest. Let yeah. me know so that I can get the right people in touch. I'm not necessarily the person. I'm, I'm saying this is not my focus right now, but yeah, uh, yeah. I'm happy to get people in touch who. Well, yeah, Great, no, thank, thank you. Uh, it, it, as, as I said, it's not. Uh, I'm not a security expert either. Uh, even though, you know, uh, I don't think that we need. Like, if you frame it as safety as opposed to security, I don't think you need to be a security expert to actually make a difference on something. So, I actually have a few other ideas here. So, so another thing that we could do instead of hackfest is to say, let's develop some features. Let's, you know, make a short list of. Uh, a uh, few features, I don't know, two, three features that we think that would make a difference, that we think uh, you know, it would be reasonable to implement given uh, the amount of money that we have, for instance, and let's make a, uh, a bid. Uh, you know, let's, open, uh, let's open this bid so people, individuals or companies or whoever, they can say, okay, I, I, I want to do this feature, I'm going to take the money if I can make it. So what are the features? I've been talking to a few people. I have some of ideas of my own. I've been talking to a few people in the past few days uh, here at Guadec. Uh, those three up there are my ideas. I mean, some of them are also uh, taken from the notes of the meeting of the safety team that happened at Guadec 2014, uh, especially the Tor VPN integration. I think it would be a really nice feature to have. Uh, a lot of people that I spoke to we're kind of um, excited about it. So you know, you have a VPN in, in your controls in the control center in the network settings. You have like some sort of VPN switch that routes all of your traffic through the Tor network. Um, something else that I thought uh, is to make it very easy to have uh, your home directory encrypted by default. Right now, uh, you know, it's not that it's 
crazy hard if you know what you're doing, but you have to jump through a few hoops and it's kind of like a manual process. It would be fantastic, I think, if you could just do it from Gnome Control Center when you create a new user. You're like, I want the home of this user encrypted. Or, or from Gnome Initial Setup, when you first set up your distribution, uh, you could do it there. Um, this seemed feasible to me. I don't know if it's too large of a feature. Maybe yes, maybe not. I don't know. Um, securely resetting the machine is also an interesting one for me. Like, let's say you have your laptop, you uh, want to sell it, or uh, you are afraid that some, you have some stuff on your laptop that shouldn't be there. Uh, you want a way to maybe delete securely all of your data, but keep maybe the operating system. Uh, so this would be uh, kind of like a securely reset feature, like other operating systems have, like for instance, Windows 10 has something like that. I don't know if Mac has it too. Um, talk to a few people. Uh, one idea that came up is um, some work, some feature work on Seahorse. Seahorse is our um, keyring manager application, basically. Uh, it hasn't exactly received a lot of love uh, recently, to use an euphemism. Um, and you know, it looks pretty much like a GNOME 2 app. Uh, it needs modernization. It would be uh, you know, a better, uh, it, it could be a lot better. So that, that there, you know, there, there, there could be something that we can do there with the help maybe of uh, some designer, revamp it, uh, optimize it for a few use cases. Another one that I thought was interesting, perhaps, I, I don't know if it if it's too large for the scope of what we want to do here, but a password manager. So something that, you know, like one password, for instance, though you have like your master password and you keep all the passwords in there that is nicely integrated with the GNOME desktop. Um, what do you guys think? This is all I could come up with. Yes, uh, Steph. And uh, tofu. Yeah. Okay, yes, that is something I was actually talking yesterday night about tofu. This is a, something that I didn't know before. I thought it was just something that you eat. Uh, it's actually not. Trust me for use. Um, yeah, that's another good idea. So for those that uh, don't know, basically it's a oh, how can you explain it? It's a way to make sure that the same person that you saw a message before is the same person that you're talking right now. So it's similar in concept to the to, it's similar in theory to the concept of key exchange, except that there's no key exchange that happens before the conversation begins. You basically take at face value what you see the very first time, and you trust that for what it is. It's like Steph tells me, oh, I'm Steph. I'm telling you hi. I'm saying you hi. And I say, OK, this may or may not be Steph. The next time that I talk to Steph, or the person that thinks, or the person that claims to be Steph, maybe it's not Steph, but at least it's the same uh, NSA agent, for instance. You know? <laughs> it's the same person. <laughs> Um, so something like that could be uh, implemented, for instance, in evolution, so or in a mail client, or in an address book. So you see, okay, this email seems to be signed with the same key that you have seen for the same person in this previous 20 emails, or something like that. Could be a nice feature. So if we're just throwing out I ideas, uh, two yeah. come to mind for me immediately. One is I spent a lot of time messing around with Tor browser recently, and uh, the way that they um, protect against tracking in a lot of cases is anonymizing uh, what is sent out or queried from the browser. And I think there, there are probably several GNOME apps where they're having an anonymous switch um, without having to run everything through Tor, but just to sanitize the requests that are sent out might be useful. Um, just think about maps if you can request things mm -hmm. without having it send your location just by having a toggle switch. And the other, which is totally unrelated to that, um, is controversial. Uh, there's a proposal called Steed, which was Steed? Steed, yeah, which is an email encryption thing that aimed to simplify the process of getting open PGP set up by sort of automatically creating a key that the user didn't have to worry about. And if you knew what you're doing, you could make your own key and set everything correctly. But mm. uh, it sort of 
pre-setting up something that's better than nothing. Um, and yeah. again, that's controversial to a lot of cryptographers, but... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, it's like tofu. It's like one of those features yeah. that um, that are. Uh, there's a question on there, um, up there, that that is not like you, you, like like real security-minded people would tell you like, oh no, you should really verify that this person is this person through another. Yeah, yeah. Um, up there. Um, uh, yes, and by the way, uh, Alan, are you taking notes? Thank you. <laughs> Just we discovered this morning, or perhaps some people know, knew before, but at least that there is actually a start of a, there are mockups of a new redesign of Seahorse. And there is even someone called Ueno that started implementing a prototype. So that I not finished, and it doesn't seem to be actively going on. But at least the mockups part has a quite good start. And for the one interested, it's filed as GNOMEBUG 711252. I don't know if it could be written somewhere. So, OK. Cool. Uh, yes? Sure. Michael, sir. Uh, okay. Um, intermission in our seahorse discussion thread. <laughs> uh, uh, I think there is uh, quite a lot of uh, possibilities to discuss for how to best use these funds. We uh, that more than we can discuss in the next ten minutes because I could yeah. argue for more than that time against uh, against or for several of these different proposals. Uh, we actually have a uh, wiki page on the GNOME wiki that was set up a year or two ago to discuss different proposals for how best to use these funds, and there's several on there, most of them relating to either Empathy Telepathy stack or Epiphany and WebKit stack, where we have some pretty serious issues uh, that need to be addressed. Uh, so um, my suggestion is uh, that we should take a look at this wiki page at our suggestions from this presentation there. Uh, uh, we need a forum for uh, more long form comments and discussion on this. Yeah, de this. definitely, definitely. I don't think, you know, my goal is not to get out of this room with a decision, uh, but my goal is to put this back uh, the top of people's attention so that we don't uh, find ourselves again here in 2017 and say, oh, we still have this money. How do we spend it? Um, Alan. So just to go back to the um, point about the Seahorse redesign, that's something that I worked on with Daiki, and he did a bunch of work. It's got pretty far, but yeah, he disappeared recently. So oh, okay. I think that's just a matter of pinging him and see what's going on. Okay. So I'm not entirely sure whether that's... A good prospect, but we could certainly find out what the status is of that initiative and then go from there. Um, in terms of ideas, um, one point that occurs to me is that they don't have to be big features. They could be, it could be a review and a series of smaller features, like say if we want to make sure that all of our, all of our apps are using HTTPS, for example. Like yeah. Maybe we could, it could be something that looks across the whole yeah yeah i'm you know i i have a couple of opinions about uh this and also what you were saying michael and uh kind of, it's kind of why like in in this like three ideas are kind of like one neat thing that it doesn't exist and then we have it rather than a small incremental improvement i mean uh as much as I don't like it, but telepathy isn't really much useful anymore or used, right? So, yeah, I see, I mean, people that used to work on telepathy that do thumbs down. So, I mean, maybe we shouldn't spend any money on it. Uh, and uh, as much as I, uh, you know, uh, really like Epiphany and I really li like that, appreciate the project, um, it, 
you know, there, there are alternatives, whereas like, if you do something like, oh, let's make home encryption easy, in my mind, that would have like, you know, uh, gotten like, there for, most, for more users. Like, it would have been something that a lot of more people could use. Maybe not. Maybe I'm wrong. That's, that's why I'm, um, I'm talking to you. <laughs> So uh, I kind of agree on uh, the telepathy point. We can argue about epiphany later. Uh, but uh, the reason I'm not a fan of the home encryption idea is because we've seen home directory encryption is insufficient for laptop use cases. Uh, I think it's very important to encrypt the, all of VAR at least. Uh, there's a lot of sensitive data in the system logs, and that's not something we can do in GNOME Control Center or GNOME Initial Setup. That that's something true. that has to be done in distro pack in distro installers and yeah. um, the guy I mentioned before from the security team did a talk on flog exactly about this topic he has he's been working on sort of really cool uh, technologies and features to enable this in a user friendly fashion so uh, he's hoping to give a talk uh, next quadec so cool. um, yeah. so um, I'm, I'm going I'm going to uh, suggest that that's not the best use of our funds. That's something we need to hope downstreams do for us. And uh, uh, regarding the Tor VPN integration, I'd just like to say that has to be thought of through carefully to make sure we're not sending private data on the same circuits, right? We don't I want know, yeah, to, yeah, yeah. right? OK. Uh, yes, and I think that also Home encryption is better than no encryption. Uh, Leonard has a question. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, I just wanted to say that from a system side of things, uh, um, for the special case that you only have one user on the system, which is probably 99.9% .9 of all setups, um, there's like the, the Lux password used for, for, for the boot up um, is actually stored in the kernel keyring. And the idea was always that GDM would uh, pick it up from there and would then use it for everything else. Um, like, for example, unlocking the session, unlocking the, the local keyring and everything. So uh, um, actually, that thing is kind of solved from the lower level kind of uh, side, and it goes. It's really about full system encryption, right? It's just a matter, and a relatively minor work of, of making GDM actually uh, pull the key, like the password, um, actually out of the keyring, and then you have it already. And I'm pretty sure that's very realistic to do. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I'm not sure how you'd use the money for this, but um, I wanted to ask about one of the social aspects of this. Mm -hmm. uh, I generally agree with the mindset something is better than nothing, um, but I think maybe some security purists would disagree with that because if you're uh, engaging in some communication that might put your life at risk, then anything less than perfect security is, uh, is not enough. And so I, I wonder how we would communicate that you know, if we in introduce more safety and security into the operating system by default, how do we communicate that it may not be enough for every single uh, application that you might want to use it for? Yeah, um, that's a that's a, that's a great point. I I don't really have a good a good answer to that. There's you can, you can yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's a tricky problem. So uh, also I would suggest. Uh, implementing some secure uh, voice communication application because, uh, well, there is a secure network uh, called Tox, but their client is not specifically written for GNOME and uh, looks uh, like Alien here. And okay. I think that we have to uh, specifically consider the use case of tablets because uh, full disk encryption is not really usable on tablets because uh, currently there is no way to import uh, to input the initial full disk encryption password using on the on-screen keyboard. There is nobody simply implementing that. That is that is a good point. Uh, it doesn't work with Plymouth. A lot of work would need to happen to make something something Plymouth Wayland. I don't know. <laughs> uh, we have uh, I think room for another. Two questions. Uh, it's not a question. It's kind of an answer to your comment. Uh, 
one of the things we discussed in the safety meeting to what expect was that uh, it's not really GNOME's job to become safe enough for people whose lives may be at risk. Like, if you are targeted by a government or something, there's nothing GNOME can do. If you are in that position, you are much better off using things like tails, hiding, or, you know, using one of the super paranoid things like cubes, OS, or just, you know, going offline. No. The, the thing that GNOME uh, can do is to protect people from everyday uh, harassers, snoopers, uh, nasty co-workers. You know, you don't want your... If you are in a family, you don't want your abusive spouse to be able to snoop through your browser history. If you live in a workplace, you don't want... Uh, uh, your workmates to be able to snoop through, through your files even though they are <clears throat> maybe, you know, world readable, things like that. Uh, so it's more pedestrian kind of safety, not... Uh, we, we, we can do things that avoid people tripping up accidentally and exposing themselves. But we cannot really protect them from very, very resourceful uh, antagonists, you know? Yeah. Um, mm. Guys, unfortunately, we have to stop here. I am, I'm really, really glad that um, uh, this is clearly a topic that a lot of you find very interesting. So if you have any other suggestions or comments, uh, please find me uh, or Alan, and uh, we can keep talking about this in the next uh, few days. So thank you.